Welcome to this video about hierarchical clustering. In this video we'll see how we can build a dendrogram based on a simple data set and how to identify clusters. We'll also discuss different linkage functions and how to select an appropriate distance metric as well as how to transpose the matrix. Cluster analysis or clustering is an unsupervised machine learning method where the aim is to identify a set of similar objects. A group that includes similar objects is called a cluster. So, how would you group the following objects in a natural way? Maybe you have grouped the cigarette with the car because they can both produce smoke. The money with the dye because they can be associated with gambling. And you might have put the plant and the flower in one group. Or maybe you group based on the color. Before we start the cluster, we must therefore first decide how we define similarity. There are various clustering methods, but the most commonly used methods are hierarchical clustering and k-means clustering. In hierarchical clustering, we identify the number of clusters after we have computed the clustering. In comparison, the k-means clustering requires that we first specify how many clusters the method should generate before we run the actual analysis. K-means clustering will be discussed in a later video. To explain how hierarchical clustering works, we'll use the following dataset that comes from measurements on five different individuals, A, B, C, D and E. This row shows the diastolic blood pressure of the five individuals, whereas this row shows the systolic blood pressure. We also have data on the body weights in kilos and body heights in centimeters as well as the total cholesterol level in the blood of the five individuals. Let's place the data table up here. The following profile plot of the five different variables will help us to understand how clustering works. For example, this point represents the systolic blood pressure of person A, whereas this point represents the systolic blood pressure of person B and so forth. Let's say that we'd like to group variables that have similar values. For example, it seems reasonable to group the total cholesterol level with body height and the variable's body weight and the diastolic blood pressure because these pairs of variables have similar values. Similarity between two variables or two objects is usually measured by calculating the distance between the data points. For example, how would you calculate the distance between these two data points? One way to calculate the distance between these two data points is to sum the horizontal and vertical distances between the two points. This can be seen as the walking distance between two points on Manhattan. Such type of distance is therefore usually called Manhattan distance. The horizontal distance is here 2 and the vertical distance is 1 which results in a total distance of 3. If we could take the shortest distance, that would correspond to the Euclidean distance. This is the same calculation we would use to calculate the longest side of a right triangle. The Euclidean distance in this example is about 2.24. The Euclidean distance is the most common distance measure used in clustering. Let's use the Euclidean distance as a distance measure for how similar the values are between the diastolic and systolic blood pressure. We therefore square the difference between these two variables for individuals A, B, C, D and E. The square root of the sum of the square differences is equal to 134.2. Then we calculate the Euclidean distance between the two variables diastolic blood pressure and body weight. We see that the variable diastolic blood pressure has a shorter distance to the variable body weight compared to the systolic blood pressure. This seems reasonable if we study the profile plot, because the values of the diastolic blood pressure are closer to the values of the body weight. If we calculate the Euclidean distance between all pairs of variables, we can create the so-called distance matrix. For example, the Euclidean distance between the systolic blood pressure and the total cholesterol level is 
Let's move the distance matrix up here. We'll now draw the following dendrogram. We first start to identify the shortest distance in the matrix, which is the distance between the body weight and the diastolic blood pressure. We therefore draw a horizontal line at the y coordinate 57.1 in the plot. The next shortest distance is between the body height and the cholesterol level. Next, we need to figure out if the systolic blood pressure is closer to this cluster or this cluster. The mean distance between the systolic blood pressure and the two variables in this cluster is 109.7, whereas the mean distance to the two variables body height and cholesterol is 128.3. We therefore cluster the systolic blood pressure with the body weight and the diastolic blood pressure because the mean distance is shorter to this cluster. Note that the y coordinate of this horizontal line should therefore be equal to 109.7. Finally, we connect the two clusters. The y coordinate of this horizontal line is the mean of the distance between the body height and the three variables in the other cluster and the distance between the cholesterol variable and the three variables in the other cluster. So, how do we interpret this dendrogram? Since the branch that connects these two variables are at the bottom of the dendrogram, we know that these two variables are the most similar out of all possible pairs. We also see that systolic blood pressure is more similar to this cluster than the cluster involving the variable's height and cholesterol level. However, note that the ordering of the leaves in this dendrogram is irrelevant. Although the systolic blood pressure is ordered so that it is put next to the systolic blood pressure, this does not mean that it is more similar to this variable. The systolic blood pressure is in fact closer to the body weight if you study the distance matrix. Most software tools order the leaves to make a nice dendrogram. The ordering of the leaves is therefore irrelevant unless your software orders the leaves in a certain way. Once we have generated the dendrogram, we can identify interesting clusters. If we set an arbitrary cutoff line at for example 150, we see that we have grouped the five variables into two clusters. And if we set a cutoff at about 100, we will group the variables into three different clusters. The cutoff value that we select will determine how many clusters we will generate. The cutoff value is determined by the user and depends on how many clusters the user wants to identify. Remember that we previously determined that systolic blood pressure should form a cluster with the two variables diastolic blood pressure and weight because the mean distance to that cluster was shorter compared to the other cluster. However, we could instead have used the median value, which in this case would give the same result because we only have two numbers. The measure that we use is called linkage function. Another way is to use the so-called single linkage function where we check the minimum distance to the clusters. Since the shortest minimum distance between the systolic blood pressure and the variables in the two clusters is to the body weight, the variable systolic blood pressure would still group the second cluster. Another option is to use the so-called complete linkage function, where we check the maximum distance to the clusters. Since the shortest maximum distance between the systolic blood pressure and the variables in the two clusters is to the diastolic blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure would again group with the second cluster. Note that the height of this part of the dendrogram now represents the maximum distance, which is 134.2. There are a number of different linkage functions to select between. You can try many different functions and select the one that generates the dendrogram that makes most sense according to the aim of your study. Another way is to use some sort of validation technique where the linkage function that for example generates the most robust cluster is selected. In addition to different linkage functions, 
it is important to select an appropriate distance metric that reflects how we define similarity. In the previous example, we grouped for example the variables body weight and diastolic blood pressure because they had similar values. However, it might make more sense to group the diastolic blood pressure with the systolic blood pressure because these two variables have similar patterns across the individuals. If one individual has a high systolic blood pressure, the same individual is likely to also have a high diastolic blood pressure. The same is also true for the body weight and body height. One way to group the variables based on similarity in their pattern or profile is to first standardize the variables so that all variables have mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. For example, if we would standardize the variable diastolic blood pressure, we should subtract the mean diastolic blood pressure from these values and divide by the standard deviation. Standardizing this variable results in values that have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. For example, this value tells us that person B has a diastolic blood pressure that is 1.56 standard deviations greater than the mean diastolic blood pressure of the five individuals. When we standardize the data, variables that have a similar pattern will have a short distance to each other. Let's calculate Euclidean distance based on the standardized variables. For example, the Euclidean distance between the two blood pressure variables is now 0.21. If we calculate the Euclidean distance between all pairs of variables, we'll get the following distance matrix. We can then generate the following dendrogram with the same method as we have seen previously. For example, the diastolic and systolic blood pressure variables now group together because they have a similar profile, which is also true for the variables weight and height. Another way to group variables with a similar pattern is to use a distance metric based on the correlation coefficient. For example, we can calculate the Pearson correlation between each pair of variables and generate a correlation matrix. We see that the Pearson correlation coefficient within the two blood pressure variables is 0 0.99. If we for example take 1 minus the correlation coefficients, we can create the following distance matrix. 1 minus 0 0.99 is 0 0.01, which tells us that there is a very short distance between the two blood pressure variables. Based on the distance matrix, we can now generate the following dendrogram, where the height of this dendrogram now represents 1 minus the Pearson correlation coefficient. Since the correlation coefficient between the variables weight and height was equal to 0 0.99, the distance is here equal to 0 0.01. Clusters at the bottom of this dendrogram therefore includes variables that have a strong positive correlation to each other. Finally, we'll see how we can cluster the five individuals instead of the five variables. If your statistical software clusters based on the rows in the matrix or on the columns, we can first transpose the matrix so that the variables are now on the columns instead. Note that the first column of the transposed matrix is identical to the first row in the original matrix. If we make a dendrogram of the five individuals, we see that the individuals A and C have similar values of the measured variables, and that individual E has values that are similar to person A and C. This was the end of this lecture about hierarchical clustering. In the next lecture, we'll see how hierarchical clustering can be used to create heat maps. Thanks for watching.